What's up guys? It's Friday and so you know what time it is. Welcome back to the Gary Brecker Show. I mean, what the fitness? Yes, it has become the Gary Brecker Show as of recently. I respond to the volume of what gets sent to me. So the more people send stuff to me, the more I realize that this needs to be addressed because a lot of people are, are watching it and buying into it. Gary Brecker it is. But first, like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment the algorithm. All right, guys, I've already done my whole spiel on Brecca a lot of times. He has a degree in biology. He worked for an insurance company. I tried to do his background. There was like a lot of lawsuits and stuff with his previous business partners from what I could see. To me, it's not super clear like how he got into the health sector of things, but he's now promoting this 10X system, which I believe is owned by Grant Cardone. Again, this isn't my area of expertise to, to figure out this information, but Regardless of all that, what I do know is he's been making a lot of waves on social media with some of the things he's been saying and some of the claims he's been making. From watching his stuff, I am convinced now, if I stood up in front of the chalkboard and I was dressed nicely enough and I talked confidently enough, I could convince people that dog shit is a health food. 100% sure of it. Not everybody, I couldn't convince everybody, but I'll bet I could convince the portion of the population that apparently is utterly devoid of more than two brain cells to rub together, who will just believe anything anyone says. Stay tuned for my desiccated dog supplement coming out next week. Let's see what Gary has to say. Fibromyalgia, so fibromyalgia, like chronic fatigue syndrome and like so many other syndromes is not a diagnosis. Fibromyalgia doesn't exist. Fibromyalgia Holy are shit. trigger points all throughout the body that cause pain, right? And they say that when you have this soreness and this achiness, you have this condition fibromyalgia. It's like irritable bowel syndrome. It's just a bunch of words that they put together and say, that's your diagnosis. Holy shit. It's not a diagnosis, it's just a bunch of stuff in the same category. Fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome come from the same place. They come from a lack of the most important nutrient in the human body, vitamin D3. What the Holy f It is the single most important compound in the human body. When God made us, he made us with the ability to create a single vitamin on our own. I'm just gonna stop. I know people who've had chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia. This is not something they made up. I also know people who had IBS. This is not something they made up. Just because we don't necessarily understand the complete etiology of something doesn't mean it's not a real thing, Gary. When it comes to most diseases, we didn't originally know the etiology of them. But apparently, hey, all you folks out there who are suffering from chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, IBS, you just need some vitamin D in your diet. That's all you need. You're all deficient. If I had to give a course on charlatans, this would be like course 101. They claim for a bunch of different ailments, it has one problem and one solution. This is snake oil sales 101. Now, before, my epic straw men commentators come out. I am not saying that vitamin D isn't important. I am not saying you shouldn't necessarily supplement with vitamin D. I think supplementing with vitamin D, probably a good idea for most people. But to claim it is the cause of IBS, chronic fatigue, and fibromyalgia just shows that you literally haven't looked at one research paper on those topics. These are syndromes of complex origin, probably not just one origin. We also know, for example, that psychological stress plays a huge role in these diseases or these syndromes. In fact, one of the top ways to reduce fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome symptoms is actually cognitive behavioral therapy, like therapy, like actually like improving your mental health improves these because pain is a complex system that is regulated not just by the brain, but also by the body. And there's crosstalk between the two. And we know this because pain is not as complicated as, well, owie. That's not exactly how it works. We used to think is the, the brain as like a master control center and the body was a bag of meat. And if you poke the bag, burn the bag, punch the bag, cut the bag, the brain goes, Owie, right there. There's a reason that, for example, depression is associated with increased levels of pain, of chronic pain. There's a reason that when people get limbs amputated, that they have phantom limb syndrome. If it was just trigger points on the body, that, Gary, that trigger point's gone. Explain that. What also you understand the complexities of pain when it comes to, there was a study where they, I think they took 300 different people and they put a different amount of skin pressure on each person. And 
they had them rate it zero to 100, zero being not painful at all, 100 being the worst pain they've ever felt. So the average was around 50. The lowest pain registered was a four. The highest was a 96. For most people, it was like, yeah, it was painful. For another person, it was damn near the most painful thing they'd ever experienced. That tells you that pain is pretty damn complex. We also know that 60% of adults over 40 have asymptomatic bulging or herniated discs in their low back that they may not even know exist. Whereas the trigger point, the tissue damage is there, why aren't they having pain? And then finally, when it comes to IBS, for example, there are studies where they took like inflatable like balloons, put them into people's intestines and inflated them to the same degree of pressure on the intestinal wall. But people with IBS registered a much greater pain response than those people who didn't have IBS. But it's all vitamin D. Now am I saying vitamin D has absolutely nothing to do with it? I have no idea. I have never seen any literature that suggests that vitamin D is a treatment for fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome. If you're low in vitamin D, could you be a little bit low energy? I mean, yeah, I can see that. But as a treatment, as the only etiology of these disorders, no. This is so damaging to people who have these diseases because they're already told by a lot of people that this stuff is just in their head. It is unbelievable that people put this content out. They don't even care. They don't even, he doesn't think he's doing anything wrong. I'm sure he really believes he's right. Now here's where he's not completely wrong. People with fibromyalgia are more likely to have a vitamin D deficiency. And if you have a vitamin D deficiency, could it contribute to some of these symptoms? I'm not sure about the latter, but I mean, I can see that. So sure, but it's not the only cause and it's not the only treatment. Vitamin D tends to be a proxy for diet quality. So people who have low diet quality tend to have low vitamin D. People who have high diet quality tend to have high vitamin D. I think it's more of a function of people with low diet quality are much more likely to have these fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, IBS symptoms than people who are eating a high quality diet. Is getting in enough vitamin D a good idea? Yes. But you'll get the cure for fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, and IBS. No, 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 it's but if you want to show off your science and you love the phrase date over feelings, make sure you check out the BioLane store. Pick yourself up one of these shirts. Link's in the description. Catch you guys next week.